Hey, so welcome to Unapologetically Sean new podcast where I will be talking about everything self-care, mental health, about life, you know, pop culture a little bit, whatever I feel like talking about, that's what I'm going to talk about. So today's topic, of course, is going to be about the late great Aaliyah and her impact on the world and of course this is the day that she did transition 20 years ago so we will talk about her and you know celebrate her a little bit and of course if you don't know the sound and what song this is this is are you feeling me from the movie Romeo must die if you haven't seen it go check it out I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or rent it somewhere I don't know but yeah, so today is August 25th, 2021. And yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so yeah, I am working from home right now, but I don't care. I'm going to talk about Aaliyah because she's one of my all time favorite singers. She was a triple threat, she did everything, and she's still flawless 20 years later. And imagine if she was alive today, what she would have been doing and who she would have been influencing you know you know you get the topic of okay if she was alive certain people wouldn't be here um i don't necessarily think that but i feel like she would have been doing some great things uh she was very talented her voice would have got more stronger she would have probably did some writing you know more acting she would have been a wife i'm sure had children she would have had an amazing life i know she would have so I just want to make this day about her and not just talk about her untimely demise, but also talk about her life because she just was such an influential individual. And from, you know, all the interviews and when people talk about her, they talk about how she was so angelic. So. You know, that's the spirit that comes off from her because you don't hear anything bad about her. And, you know, when you think about your own life and the day you transition, you want people to talk about you in a positive way as well. So when I think about her, I, I try to think about myself and how I would want people to remember me, you know? Yeah, and when you think about life in general, you can use this as an example like she was only 22 years old when she passed and um, you see how much she had done in her seven year career that many people don't do in a lifetime so, so she really inspires me to keep going because to be that young and accomplish so much it gives me the drive that I can follow my dreams and persevere through any obstacle in my life because she's been through a lot. And I know I don't really like talking about the whole R. Kelly situation because if she didn't talk about it while she was alive, why is everybody else trying to talk for her? Because she's not here to defend herself or even talk about what really went down. I don't agree with anything that he has ever done because that's just disgusting. And I hate such talented people have so many demons that they never take care of. It just always happened. That's another topic that I want to talk about later on because it's really sad. But she persevered through that situation and became the great idea that she was destined to be. That didn't stop her. So when you think about your own life and things and that might have happened to you or obstacles that might have been put in your path, you never let anything stop you because you can persevere just like anybody else but that's what i admired about her is that she never let anything stop her she wasn't afraid of change she wasn't afraid of being different you know she was naturally different she didn't have to do much to be influential she didn't have to do much to be a trendsetter she just was that you know that was her aura it was just naturally her, you know? And we all strive to be there. We all strive to just naturally be us, unapologetically. That's why I named this podcast Unapologetically Sean, because I am learning 
at 29 to just be unapologetic, you know? So, on yeah. a lighter note, let's just celebrate Aaliyah and talk about, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite songs that she has and my favorite videos that she have done. Now, let's see. Uh, I don't... I don't know, like, what my favorite favorite, but the song that always pop in my head is off of the One in a Million album, and it's called Heartbroken. I do not know why that song always pops in my head. Like, I don't know if maybe that was just one of my all-time favorite songs by her, but that song is my favorite, you know? And it go a little bit something like this, okay? Baby, 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 yeah. I wanna satisfy you. That's just a little bit. You get a little snippet of how, how it go in the beginning. I don't know. That song always popping up in my head. But I love the one in a million album. I feel like that's one of my all-time favorite albums by her. Besides the self-titled Aaliyah album, I love all, I love that whole album. But I don't know what it is about the One in a Million album. It just, it definitely gives you New York vibes. I've never been to New York. I'm not sure if I want to go to New York because I'm scared of rats and they rats look like mini dogs. I ain't got time for that. Not at all. But that's the vibe you get when you hear that album. It's just, it's everything. I don't. I'm so glad that it's finally on streaming services. I had it on my phone for a little bit. Thanks to somebody on YouTube. Thank you. Because I love that album. And it's just everything, you know. I remember when I was given that album. I was young. My cousin gave it to me. I do not know where I'd ever deal with it. Pro it probably was scratched up because I played it so much. But I used to love that album. And now I'm so glad that I can listen to it in my car, on um, streaming Apple Music. So finally, after 20 years, the fans, us fans, been begging for her music because I understand with the situation with her uncle and Blackground Records and the the family drama that they have and the money not going to the right places. Honestly, I don't know where the money is going because I don't know those people personally. And I feel like they should do the right thing, you know. Pay the estate. Please pay the estate. Because you holding her, her legacy hostage like this is, is really taken away from growing it her legacy should be like salina's legacy how her family upkeeps her legacy that's how Aliyah's legacy should be it's just really messed up that it took 20 years for her music to be played and i understand when you lose a child because i have children and i understand that child comes from you and you won't you don't want to hear that that child that you lost being her mother you don't want to hear her music because it's going to bring back all those sad emotions because i i know she's still going through it she's going to be going through it for the rest of her life because that was her baby but then again you have to think about it this was what your child worked so hard for this is what she died for and to hold it hostage is 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 not doing her any justice because she worked so hard for that she loved that that was something she loved so when you go on through grief because i know what it feels like to go through grief everybody knows what it feels like to go through grief um you have to think about what that person would want not just what you want you know you have to take yourself out of the out of the situation and think about what that person would want. i'm definitely not saying that her mother shouldn't feel the way she feel because I would feel the same way. But after time goes by and you are able to see it in another light, 
then you have to focus on what that person would have wanted that's all i'm saying i definitely stand with alia i support her and i think that even if people still stream the music still buy the albums I think we could support her in other ways. We could donate to her memorial funds. We could do that. Even if you buy the albums, you can, the amount you spend on that album, you can donate to a fund that her estate has put in place that Aaliyah supported while she was here. And that way you can be able to still feel, okay, I can listen to the music and I'm still helping at the same time. I just really wish that their family drama would not spill over into her legacy you know yeah and i just hope that you know down the line she gets to have the legacy that she spoke of you know she wanted to be remembered as an all-around full entertainer if i paraphrase that wrong i'm sorry but you know what i'm talking about um so and also she did say she wanted to be known as a a good person as well and i think that part has come you know that we all know that she was a good person because people speak highly of her but yes her music needs to be celebrated she needs to be celebrated don't think so much about you know the day that she passed away just think about her life and and just celebrate her because yeah she got to live out her dreams that many of us want to do she got to do it and she lived a full life even if it was only 22 years she did live a full life and that's how i remember her so when i look back at interviews when i listen to her music i don't think about her being gone and the way she passed i don't think about that i think of i kind of in my mind when i think about her and i listen to her it just feel like oh well she's just taking a break that's how i look at death in general i look at it as oh this person is just on vacation they they, they're away you know they're not necessarily gone they might be gone in the flesh but their spirit is always here your spirit never dies so that's how i look at death it took me a long time to learn that like transitioning you are just transitioning to another dimension another world i don't know if any of you are are religious or even not religious spiritual whatever but that's how i look at it she fulfilled her assignment on this earth and it was just time for her to go somewhere else and complete other assignments somewhere else that's how you have to look at it and you just be happy that you still have a part of this person here being that you can listen to her music you can go back and look at old interviews and feel like she still is here so that's how i look at it so i try not to get sad i just tell myself hey she had other places to go and and also you know she fulfilled what she was supposed to fulfill on this earth so that's how we're gonna look at it and we just gonna keep celebrating her and you know keep talking about her Keep her legacy alive and thriving. That's what we're here to do. So back to some of my favorite videos. I think one of my favorite videos by her is More Than A Woman. I just love that the whole theme was like she was in a motorcycle. That was cool. And I just love that song. It's just she looked amazing. The video was amazing. Well written by Static Major. One of my faves and rest in peace to him as well uh he was definitely very talented as well but that's one of my favorite songs off her self-titled album was more than a woman and uh what's another favorite song off of her i like loose rap that was one of my favorite extra smooth it's whatever 
that whole album. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about some stuff that I want to be changed because there's one song on there I can be that I feel like they need to remaster because her vocals are too low on there and and the uh, the beat is a little too loud. But if they remaster that, that song is everything. Thanks to Tank for writing that. If y'all didn't know, yes, Tank wrote that song. But um, also, what if that one needs to be remastered too? Same thing. But other than that, everything else on that album, masterpiece. It is timeless. It will never get old. And I love working out to that album. Because it's on SoundCloud, if you didn't know. It's going to be on streaming services September 10th. So be looking out for that as well. All right, let's get to wrapping this thing up. And first, I want to thank you for listening to the very first episode. Um, we're just celebrating our Leah today. And we're just going to keep positive thoughts and just keep, keep on keeping on. And go follow your dreams. Look at her life and definitely gain that you can persevere through anything that might come your way. All right. So this will be a staple. I probably will try to do an episode once a week. I'm not going to say my plans yet because today was the day I thought about doing this. So this will be a weekly thing. But yes, wrapping it up. Thank you. Have a great day and a great week. And we're just going to stay positive, stay hopeful, and stay unapologetic. All right. Bye.